Previously on MasterChef, a wedding to remember as America's best home cooks catered the reception. But Leslie's poor captaincy. I don't, I don't know what's going on. Get your together now. Led to a blue team victory. I said I'm sorry. You're not sorry at all. And in the pressure test, it was a tearful Jordan who said goodbye. Tonight, the kitchen is graced by two returning champions. Last year's winner, Luca. Ah! And our first ever MasterChef Junior winner, Alexander. It was like royalty walked in. But it's one catastrophic mistake that takes center stage. For the very first time, someone has brought us a dish that they did not cook. Come on down. Make your way to your station. The top 30, top 20, and now the top 16. It's an incredible feeling. I'm a country boy from, from Wilmington, Ohio. So to walk away with the title Master Chef, for me, that's that's the ultimate. Let's go. I'm really hoping that I win this mystery box because winning two in a row would be an incredible achievement, and it would really prove to my competitors that I am one of the front runners. Welcome back, everyone. Seems like we put you through a lot already, doesn't it? Yes. <laughs> but trust me, we are just getting started. Now, it's time for another mystery box challenge. As with every mystery box challenge, the home cooks must prepare, cook, and present one incredible dish using all or some of the ingredients inside the box. Focus, it's time to find out what's under your mystery box. I want something unique that'll throw somebody else's game off under the box. I want a rabbit or a squirrel or something that somebody, somebody look at and go, whoa. I really want bone marrow under that box. I can really get down and dirty with some bone marrow. On the count of three, lift your boxes. One, two, three, lift. Oh my god. That's right. Tin cans. People across America cook with cans like this every day. Ingredients we all have in our pantries. Every house in America has tin cans. Oh my. Except in most houses, the cans have labels. <laughs> they don't need labels because where I'm from, everything we do is in a can. I'm feeling real confident in what I'm going to produce. In my house, we never really ate canned food. We always use like fresh ingredients. So at this point, I'm kind of worried. This is like a doomsday prepper's dream come true. You all have 52 identical cans, identical ingredients. You can open up as many cans as you like, use as many or as few as you like. You'll also each have a staple pantry box, which includes milk, eggs, and flour to help make your dishes shine. We'll each have 60 minutes to turn whatever's in those cans into one stunning dish. Win this challenge, and you can come into the pantry where you'll get a huge advantage. An advantage that can send your toughest competitor back home. Right, is everyone ready? Yes, chef. Yes, chef. Your 60 minutes starts now. Don't know what that is. Ugh. What? Nice. Uh. Oh, so, this is 52 awesome. cans of deliciousness. Let's look at the basic one. Chickpeas, baby corn, canned olives, beetroot, fruit salad, fruit salad. Peaches. Asparagus. I mean, it's a tough challenge, this one, guys, tonight. I mean, yeah. you know, I don't envy that task. How many ingredients do you open? Is it three cans? Is it six? Is it 10? Is it 20? The key tonight is to use the staple pantry to get you into some quality handmade food, and then just use the cans for that extra touch. All of the peaches. That's a plus. So, Joe, what would you do? I would definitely take that spinach, wash it out good, lots of garlic to take the can flavor away. Yeah. And do maybe like an orichette with garlic and spinach. Nice. 
I'm going to do Eggs Benedict. I didn't open all my cans because a couple of cans stood out already. I have a creamy beet and potato soup that's going to have a crispy potted meat topping. It's going to be like a borscht. I think this is one that I can actually win. Like, this is one where having a childhood filled with canned foods is actually an advantage. I've been waiting for that to be an advantage in this competition, and now it is. I think it is a huge waste of time opening up all these cans because there's so many. So I'm using the staple box and the canned fruit to make a cake. I am legitimately stumped right now. I am about to start crying. Francis L. So, yes, Chef. Uh, how are you doing? Yeah, right. experimenting. Experimenting. Are you experimenting, really? <laughs> Come on. Right, what's the dish? Well, I'm doing a Thai-inspired uh, seafood soup. So I took a lot of the juices from the cans of fish, and I made a fish stock and soup. Wow, juices now. Yeah, and Everyone's discarding the juices, so you're going. You're, you're... Juices are the, my best friend. I've made an amazing seafood stock here, I believe. Good luck. Hello, Aran. What do you know Hi. about cooking with canned food? Um, you making a little fruit salad? No, I'm making a, a sponge roll cake. Is your sponge cake already baking? Yeah, it's in the oven right now. I'm filling it with some fruit and hey. Oh, so you're going That's pastry. Smart. Yeah, I'm going to make the fruit not taste as artificial. There you yeah, go. you got to rinse them really good. Yeah. Victoria, how are you feeling? Uh, I'm feeling all right. Where are we going? It will be a potted meat fritter with a, a pickled salad. Top 16. Um, great news for making this far, but we haven't actually seen you shine yet. You know, I haven't shown up like I wanted to show up. And uh, I'm hoping that with this challenge, I can do that. Even though it's canned food, I want to put my best out there, and I want it to be phenomenal. Yep. I want to be someone that people are looking out for. Good luck. I think I'm just going to make a soup. Ten minutes left. Tough. Tough mystery box, this one. Very hard. So I see Elizabeth's using the beets. Yeah. What is she making? That traditional Russian borscht. Love the flavor. Borscht is smart. Yeah, very yeah. smart. Francis leg, he's taking all the juices from the cans. You know, Asian-inspired sort of coconut broth soup. Haran made a sponge. Oh, really? And it's already in the oven baking, and then she's got the fruit compote cooking very down. Smart. Willie, what's he making? So he's doing the processed ham with the fried egg. Almost like a sort of eggs benedict. Boring. Just yeah. Yeah, uninspiring. I just... This kind of a mystery box really discerns which cooks are able to yeah. think on their feet, yeah. have good intuition, yeah. and are really intelligent. Let's go. Last minute remaining. For one of you, a huge advantage is at stake here. They may be cans, but you can make a delicious meal. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. One, stop! Hands in the air! They may be cans, but you can make a delicious meal. Five, four, three, two, one, stop! Hands in the air! Well done. Throughout the Mystery Box Challenge, the judges taste elements of all the home cook's dishes as they come together. They now take one final look to choose the top three standouts, and the winner of this challenge will receive a major advantage in the next round. I have a feeling that this dish might finally put me on the map. I'm just crossing my fingers, and I'm like, this is the dish that's going to get me there, because I want to be in the top three. It looks a little spit. Uh, yeah. I look down at my dish, and it's gorgeous. That soup tastes Bloody amazing. This is going to be my night, people. Hey, well done. Now on to three seriously good-looking dishes that we want to take an even closer look at. Three dishes that stood out. The first dish we want to take a closer look. It was elevated. It was hard to believe that the actual ingredients originated coming out of a can. This home cook is about to have their first time in the top three. Please step forward. Elizabeth. Oh, my God, like... <laughs> I finally feel like I'm a standout competitor. Wow. Describe the dish, please. It's a beet and potato cream-based soup with a can of condensed milk and coconut milk. And then I made a crispy black-eyed pea, canned ham, and chickpea topping. 
So you wanted that sort of creaminess? I did want the creaminess, yes. That's why I used the condensed milk. Yeah, it's got that intriguing taste. Delicious tasting. Um, doesn't really need that sweetness there, but you've corrected that balance with the seasoning. So I got the heat. What's the, is that chili? Uh, cayenne and smoked paprika. Yeah, it looks great. I'll be happy to see that in a restaurant tonight for dinner, and I'd struggle to understand that that came out of a tin. Great start. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Chef. Great. I love the heat that comes with it, but also the saltiness of the ham, which, you know, a lot of times when it's kind of canned and preserved like that, mm -hmm. can be too much. But mm -hmm. here, used to great effect. Great job. Thank you. I love the richness of it. I love the fact that you added the croutons of uh, processed meat and chickpeas. I think it has a good depth of flavor. Great job. Good soup. Thank you. Thank you. The second dish that we really want to examine further had a hearty component to it. It was something that we were intrigued by. First time for this home cook in the top three. Please step forward. Victoria. Boom, I'm in the top three, it happened. Tell us exactly what it is. It's a potted meat fritter with a spicy, smoky ketchup and a uh, sautéed artichoke and beet salad with an herb vinaigrette. So how many canned components are on the dish? All in all, I would say that there's maybe eight cans in here. I think there are maybe five meats inside there. Really good. They're sweet, spicy, earthy, you know, mm -hmm. all those flavors going on. Great use of the ingredients. You know, the fritters are, are heavy, kind of dense. You know, yeah. they could have been smaller, a little more finesse given to them. But as far as what you put on the plate, it's uh, it's really great. Thank Good you, job. Chef. Thank you. We love the idea of what you did with the fritters. It's very sort of in, hip, sort of gastro pubby. Here's the thing. Um, it may not look the most attractive, yeah. uh, but it, it delivers a punch of flavor. Uh, batter, delicious. Canned artichokes, you know, um, not every chef can use them. Uh, you've soaked them, got a really nice char on them. Beetroots work. But the spicy ketchup's the one that lifts that whole dish together. What's in there? So I incorporated the adobo sauce with some diced tomatoes. Uh, good job. Thank you Thank so much, you. chef. Thank you. The third and final dish we want to take a closer look at. This home cook made a very, very smart use of the staple pantry box. This home cook did not open all their cans. Please step forward, Iran. Tell me what the dish is. So it's a sponge roll cake with canned fruit inside and a flavored whipped cream. Certainly the smartest dish out of this mystery box is this one today. If nothing else, just the ability to bake a sponge cake that's this soft and moist and light is a skill set already. Thank you. Then the intelligence of making a dessert, <laughs> no one else in this room did. And then the courage to use one can of fruit Thank cocktail. You. So it one cherry in it, though, right? The whole can had one cherry in it. <laughs> yeah. This is brilliant. Thank you. How cool. <laughs> Any flavorings in the sponge? There's vanilla bean in there, mm -hmm. but that's it. Delicious. Thank Light, you. fragrant. What would I change? Um, a bit more color, maybe? Mm -hmm. Some lemon zest in the cream, cut down that richness. You may be 18 years of age, but right now, tonight, you have the biggest set of balls in this competition. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Good job. Um, Elizabeth, Victoria, Aran, uh, all three of you, well done. There can only be one winner who will join us in the pantry and receive that huge advantage. I deserve to win this challenge because I really, I think, thought out of the box. I made a cool, creative dish. I want this advantage. An advantage like never before. It's crucial that I win this mystery box so that I can finally start to pull away from the rest of my competitors and make a name for myself in the kitchen. The person who cooked the 
best dish tonight. The fact that I took the risk to make this cake, nobody else did anything similar to mine. This just shows my competitors that I am one of the front runners here. The person who will get this huge, huge advantage in the upcoming elimination challenge. That dish was cooked by... The person who will get this huge, huge advantage in the upcoming elimination challenge. That dish was cooked by... Congratulations. Elizabeth. I feel amazing. I'm, I'm like, I finally won! Are you ready to find out what your advantage is? Yes. Let's go. As the winner of the mystery box challenge, Elizabeth is now in control of the elimination test, where at least one person will leave the competition. Elizabeth, welcome to the MasterChef pantry. Are you ready to find out the theme of today's elimination challenge? Born ready. Well, we're not going to tell you what it is. We've invited a special guest who's going to do that for us. Someone who knows how to prevail under the pressure of this competition. Someone who has stood right there where you're standing. Please welcome back last year's MasterChef winner, Luca. Elizabeth. Look, it's so nice to meet you. Same here. Well, good to Luca. see you. Now, last 12 months, what have you been doing? I have my own catering company. Brilliant. What's it called? Dinner with Luca. Uh, did it, ah. <laughs> <laughs> Kate and I are waiting for a little baby. Oh, Fantastic. Hi. Hi. Oh, Amazing. Good. Then I have my beautiful cookbook titled My Italian Kitchen, Favorite Family Recipes, which is available now. And my restaurant will be opening by the end of the year in Brooklyn. Wow. What's the name of that? We don't know yet. Probably Luca. <laughs> Easy, right? So, Elizabeth, you know what's even cooler than one MasterChef winner? Two MasterChef winners. Please welcome our youngest winner ever. Oh, First yes. MasterChef Junior, Alexander. Hi. 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 Good to see you, brother. Welcome Good home. See you too. Thank you. you. Yeah. Now, you've been busy. Yeah. What have you been up to? I've been trying to do more cooking lessons for people who are inspired by the show, especially uh, young kids who like to cook and want to <laughs> learn more. And I've kept on cooking. I've learned so much. Wow. Two amazing MasterChef champions together in one place. Two amazing MasterChef dishes hidden under here. Elizabeth, we told you that you would get some huge advantages in here. For your first advantage, you do not have to cook either of these complex dishes tonight. <laughs> Your second advantage involves a choice regarding these two different dishes, which we will show you in the MasterChef kitchen. You're not going to choose between the two dishes. You're going to choose who is going to have to cook which dish. OK, Elizabeth, let's go and show everybody what they'll be cooking in tonight's Elimination Challenge. Let's go. Upstairs, please. Because Elizabeth won the last Mystery Box Challenge, she is safe from elimination, and she is through to the next stage of the competition. The rest of you are far from safe. At least one of you will be going home after this elimination challenge. Elizabeth wasn't back there alone. Please welcome two MasterChef champions. Last year's winner, Luca. <laughs> And our first ever MasterChef Junior winner, Alexander. Woo! Ah. Excellent. I cheered for Luca at home, and to see him there so successful and happy and proud, I want to be that. Alexander walks in, and that kid is, like, fierce. I mean, at 14 years old, I was, like, I was playing with my Barbie dolls. We asked Luca and Alexander to each make us one of their signature dishes. Luca, can you please tell us what you created? This is my pancetta wrapped veal, filled with grana padano and sage, served with radicchio, apples, and finished with a very classic white wine sauce. 
it looks very restaurant quality. So I'm a little intimidated by it because I'm not known for the prettiest of plates. Alexander, why don't you tell us about your dish? This is my passion fruit panna cotta with a juniper berry, raspberry coulis, candied hazelnuts, and a lavender crumble. 14 years old, and this looks like something I would go get in a five-star restaurant. Some of you will have to make Luca's savory dish, and some of you will have to cook Alexander's sweet dish. And guess who gets to decide? That's right, your fate is in the hands of Elizabeth. My basic strategy is to assign the panna cotta to my competitors who don't have the finesse and pull it off, and assign the veal to people that I think have weaker palates. Elizabeth, which home cooks will have to recreate Alexander's phenomenal panna cotta? And the first person that is going to cook panna cotta is someone who's brimming with confidence, but I wonder if his bearish hands can create something delicate, and that will be Cutter. Oh, death by desserts. Here we go. Give me some mojo, bro. <laughs> Give me some mojo. <laughs> OK, the second home cook. Christian. Third. Jamie. Wow. Next pick. Christine. Next name, please. Iran. Let's go. Next. Francis B. Next one. Victoria. One more. Last but not least, Tyler. Elizabeth picked me to do the panna cotta. I'm actually kind of excited. Which means the rest of you out there will have the almost impossible mission of recreating Luca's veal dish. All of you, please, come up and have a taste of these amazing dishes. Thank you. There you go. Alexander's panna cotta is so good. Every bite I'm taking, I am cataloging the different flavor profiles, and I'm feeling really confident. I'm tasting the dish, and what I'm noticing is that it's perfectly balanced. I guess I'm starting to realize that I have a really good palate, and I'm going to kick this dish's ass. Now that you've seen and tasted these two amazing dishes, it's time for you to replicate them. You'll each have 60 minutes to make either Luca's savory dish or Alexander's sweet one. Whichever one Elizabeth has selected for you. Is everybody ready? Yes, yes sir. Your time starts now. Off we go. I'm just going by what I tasted on Luca's dish. What does radicchio look like? And I'm looking like radicchio. What is radicchio? Ah. Let's go, guys. Come on. Good luck, guys. Just chilling with Luca. No big deal. Glad you have. So, Luca, his signature dish, mm -hmm. a pancetta-wrapped veal roulade. How hard is that? But the jeopardy is intense, because you need that pancetta to be crisp. You've got to cook the veal properly, and then you've got to let it rest so it cooks properly on the inside. So you're not just cooking, you're butchering. Yeah. So Counting it level. thin. So, Alexander's dish, a panna cotta, cooked mm -hmm. cream, but held together with gelatin. Yeah. And that is a very technical thing to be able to accomplish. Just the way it sits on the plate. Mm -hmm. It should be bulging at the right, side. Right. And so it's got a set but it takes time to set. Right, you can't That's rush it. Right, Courtney, why do you think Elizabeth picked veal for you? Well, probably because I've done some nice desserts and yeah. she hasn't had a chance to see me do anything savory. I think she definitely sees me as a threat. I've been in the top before and she would probably like me to go home. What are you doing? I had to pound out my veal. I rolled it up. It's resting in the fridge. Yeah, good. So you rolled it up tight with a saran wrap? Rolled it up good. tight with saran wrap, yes. And then you're going to sear that off? Yes, yeah, I'm going to sear it off, baste it. Good luck. Christian, why did Elizabeth give you the panna cotta? Be honest with you, I really don't know. And honestly, I really don't care. You I mean, care, be honest with you, I'm down here trying to learn as I go. And mm -hmm. I'm not really that great with desserts, but I mean, this is why I'm here. Be honest with you, maybe that's why she gave you panna cotta. Probably so. Right, Big Willie, how are you doing? I'm doing pretty good, Chef. So you're cooking it now. There's no pancetta around there? No, I'm going to sear this off, and then I'm going to wrap it in the pancetta and oh. put it in the oven. So you're cooking the veal twice, so I suppose the danger tonight is you can actually make it dry. Did Luca tell you to do that? No, Luca didn't tell me to do it. I just, I think that's what I need to do. Yeah, but Luca didn't do that. Now, that's not what he did. 
Someone's going home tonight. Is it you? It's midway through the elimination test. One half of the home cooks must replicate MasterChef Junior winner Alexander's passion fruit panna cotta. The other half must reproduce MasterChef champion Luca's pancetta wrapped veal. But not everyone is sticking to the menu. Big Willy, you're cooking the veal twice. Did Luca tell you to do that? No, Luca didn't tell me to do it. I think that's what I need to do. Yeah, but Luca didn't do that. Someone's going home tonight. Is it you? I don't think it's going to be me. Wow. Uh, Luca, Big Willy's searing off a veal first before he wraps it in pancetta. He wants to add more flavor. Uh, well, good for him. He can invent a new dish. I would not evolve it because, as you taught me, you need to learn how to walk before you start running. Yeah. So, Alexander, based on your observations, who is doing that panna cotta justice? I think that Jamie is doing really well. She's done the order of steps properly. She's got her panna cottas in the blast chiller. And I think that she's leaving herself enough time to plate, which is important. And also, Tyler looks pretty good. I'm extremely nervous about the panna cotta nut setting. So I wanted to make sure that I got it in there and at least gave it enough time to set nicely. OK, uh, Mr. Panic, uh, all over the place. Looks Mr. like a bomb's gone off. Yeah, it is. Yes. It's not panna cotta, it's panic cutter. Yeah. <laughs> when was the last time you had a panna cotta? Never. Never made a panna cotta? Never made a panna cotta. Have ever. you eaten it? No, never even eaten it. Cut it. Seriously, try to work tidy. Alexander's watching. 16 minutes left to cook. Come on, start pulling it together. What the? Somebody took a panna cotta off my drive. I originally put in three panna cottas, and as I pull my dry out, there's only two here. I don't know if somebody took it or on accident or is trying to sabotage me. 90 seconds left. My first panna cotta, it just puddles. Oh. I guess I should try and bang out the other one. Puddle. I wish I had my third one. Come on, let's go. Hurry up, come on. Go, go, go. Oh. Come on, Tyler, put it on the plate. Come on. Let's go. Fishing touches. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, one, and stop! Hands in the air! Elizabeth, Luca, Alexander, please come downstairs. Alexander, Luca, this way, please. Elizabeth, straight back to your station, thank you. Luca and Alexander, thank you for giving inspiration to our contestants this evening. Well, good luck to everybody, and listen to this three genius of the business, because every word they tell you is better than a book. Uh, good luck with your book, Alexander. Well done. Good luck. Good night, guys. You. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Now it's time to start tasting those amazing dishes and find out who has cooked their last meal inside the MasterChef kitchen. OK, uh, Courtney, let's go. I am so proud of my dish. It is like a photo replication of Luca's dish. Uh, sauce, uh, absolutely nailed. Tell me what's inside the veal. Inside the veal is guana padana cheese and sage leaves. The dish looks beautiful. Talk to me about the radicchio. How did you cook it? Um, I slowly cooked it um, with apple and a little bit of chicken stock and just let it cook itself down, get tender. Yeah, I mean, you've definitely got your mojo back. Um, slight overcharring on the sprouts. However, the veal is nailed. Rolled nice and tightly. You do cook with confidence. Great job. Thank you, Chef. So why do you think Elizabeth gave you the veal? Because it was a very difficult plate to replicate, and she saw that I could do desserts, and I think she thought I might stumble on this. Just by sight alone is right there with Lucas. Delicious. It's Thank perfumed, you. it's fragrant, it's cooked well. 
Perfect. Great job. Thank you. Is this something you've done before? I have never cooked veal before. Ever. That's amazing. Thank you. This dish is definitely a big statement. I like the charred uh, sprouts. I think they're good that way. Thank you. I think the sauce is light. has enough sweetness. It's not over acidic. Good job. Thank you. Taking this dish that I don't even know what it's made of and mailing it is sending a strong message to all the other competitors, like, you need to watch out. Next up, Big Willie. OK. It looks like Luca's dish, so I'm thinking, OK, good job. When you started cooking the veal dish, did you not listen to Luca? I did listen. Um, when you pound um, any kind of protein out, it never takes lightly to being cooked twice. So the big issue you had tonight was searing it without pancetta and then wrapping it and cooking it again, because as it rests, it will just continue cooking. Yeah. So therefore, it's going to be dry. Shame. Because sauce is nice, particularly delicious. You've nailed that part, but the hero. The hero. It's really dry. So there's a reason why Luca stuffed it, rolled it, wrapped it, and soaked it. I'd be gutted. Really sad for you to go home tonight. But it looks like you've got one foot out the door. Unless there's a bigger mistake out there tonight than yours. You're going back to church on Sunday. Shame, you're the hero. The hero. It's really dry. I'd be really sad for you to go home tonight. But it looks like you've got one foot out the door. Unless there's a bigger mistake out there tonight than yours. You're going back to church on Sunday. Unfortunately, Big Willie's was kind of a letdown, which made me really sad. I mean, he has to fail eventually if I'm going to win, but he didn't have the best day. OK, next up, please, Christian. <laughs> Christian, how are we doing? Not so good. Very disappointed in myself. The candy hazelnuts are not there. My plating could have been better. I feel that the hazelnut crumble could have been better. I'm not, I'm not happy. I know I could have done better. It's like a, a cheesecake. Just way too much gelatin. It's so firm. This is something where Elizabeth put the target on your back. She wanted you out of here. She knows how strong you are. She thought that this might trip you up, and I think that it did, because this is easily the worst thing you've given us. Cutter, come on up. Why do you think that you were the first person given this dish, this panna cotta, by Elizabeth? Because she knows desserts is my Achilles heel, and there's a lot of finesse to it. And I have, like she said, big old bare hands. And... Um, your um, panna cotta is actually really quite good. It's funny, you can tell just by the consistency of these which one's is right, which one's wrong. And yours, Cutter, happens to be right. Thank you. Elizabeth, I don't know what she was planning, but she targeted you, and I think it was a miss. Gonna have to get him next time. Good job. Thank you. Please, come up. Jamie. I wish I still had my third ramekin. I mean, my third one was my safety net but it went missing. What do we have here? I need a spoon, I think actually. I think it was smush. I don't even know what to call it. So, what happened? This is the first time in six years that it is not set up on me. If I would have had a better one, maybe. It's like a really good pudding. But the flavor's great, so I guess the, the one thing is seeing who else out here, you know, performed at this level or lower. I am downright embarrassed right now. This is a nightmare. I am praying to the patient gods above that someone messed up more than me. Last up, Tyler, please, let's go. Three blindfolds, please. Three blindfolds. Blindfolds. Is there anything you want to tell me about this dish? 
thought everything was coming together, and then when it was time to plate, I had a you know jackknife power bomb the ramekin on the plate just to get it out of there. Right, uh, Tyler. For the very first time in MasterChef history, I am so sorry to tell you that someone has brought us a dish that they did not cook. What do you mean, Chef? Stay there. Chef Ramsey walked to the back. I was like, oh, what's about to happen? I'm getting pretty nervous. My heart's beating as fast as it can beat. I still have no clue what's going on. Oh, my gosh. You gotta be kidding me. Tyler. For the very first time, someone has brought us a dish that they did not cook. What do you mean, chef? Stay there. What do you see on that tray, young man? My ramekins. Your ramekins? Yes, Chef. I, uh, I my, my put my ramekins on the top shelf, and I don't know if they got switched. I, I don't know, okay. Chef. Um, you didn't. Uh, They're on the bottom shelf, bottom left-hand side. You put four ramekins in the blast chiller. I just pulled out the same four. You served us Jamie's panna cotta. I had no clue. I, I apologize. For the record, I 100% believe you. Yes, Chef. I think you panicked. I think you ran in there with seconds to go and grabbed somebody else's dish. Uh, this is a first in MasterChef history. I'm afraid Joe, Graham, and myself need a few seconds to catch up. Stay there. Oh, dear. I can't believe this is happening. Well, I mean, look, look. If we wanted to taste his dish, it would be disrespectful to every other contestant who played by the rules. And the rules of the competition, every challenge, you have to play your food. Now, I don't think it was meant purposely. I think no. it was just a complete mistake. Yeah. Rules are rules. Rules are rules. In MasterChef, the biggest cooking competition anywhere in the world, we have to judge you for what you put on a plate. But for the first time ever, we've had a dish served tonight by you that you didn't make, which contravenes the rules of MasterChef. Oh, Tyler. I am so sorry, but your journey is going to end Tonight. Honestly, from the bottom of my heart, young man, we've seen your journey go from this up to there, and we had no idea it was going to end like this. But you must promise yourself that you'll continue cooking, because you're going to make it. I think you're that good. Thank you, Chef. Anything you'd like to say to us before you go? Uh, again, I apologize for what happened. I understand your decision, and I appreciate everything you guys have, uh, have allowed me to do. Jamie, I, I apologize. I'm sorry. I had no intent on doing that. No. I'm sorry that you grabbed mine. And hey, at least if they would have tasted it, it would have tasted pretty damn good. So, thank you. Uh, Tyler, please, uh, take off your apron. Place it on your bench. Good luck, my man. Thank you, guys. Thank Keep you. Keep cooking. Great job. I'm, I'm sorry. Thank you, Chef. Appreciate that, Good Chef. Good Thank you. This is devastating. But I feel like the judges made a fair decision. Um, you break the rules, you pay the price. I broke the rules.
Good job. Thank you. The Master Chef changed my life. Hopefully, it leads to better things. My dream hasn't changed. I get knocked down, but I'll get back up. This isn't the end. It's only a detour. Listen, uh, that hurts, let me tell you. That was a very sad ending. But the competition has to go on. And we have had some great dishes tonight. But there is one dish that literally hit all the high notes. This person will also have a huge advantage in a game-changing position in the next challenge. The best dish of the night is Little Miss Tippy Toes. Courtney, well done. <laughs> Great dish, 100% uh, nailed. This victory doesn't feel as good as the first one, just in light of everything that happened. But it is validation that I am supposed to be here. From here on out, it's nothing but perfection. And I'm going to win this thing. There are 15 home cooks tonight standing in front of us. What's ahead is never going to be easy. Good night. Next time on MasterChef, you will be cooking in pairs. Uh-uh. No, thank you. The home cooks meet their match. Girl, we got it. As teammates. Let's be honest. Leslie's your bitch. <laughs> quickly become enemies. I have an idiot as a partner. Hell yeah, I whoop his ass. And a performance so shocking. To be honest. Two could be going home. Both of you have got one foot out the door. One potato, two potato.